Hello everyone, welcome back to the Green and Morning Show here on Newcastle Fans TV. Today we are joined by a man who played for Newcastle United in the early 2000s and of course made his mark in the Champions League as well. The last time Newcastle United were in the Champions League, this man was playing that is of course Lamar Loire Loire. Welcome to the show, Lamar. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. No, it's no problem at all. Sam, this is a man that has probably the best celebration in Newcastle, doesn't he? Oh, I mean, <laughs> this is the thing, wasn't it? I mean, Oberfemi Martins tried, but he was just a pretender to the throne. I mean, Lamana, you, you were the king of the celebrations. Where did you first start it? And how many managers um, were so worried that you were going to get injured doing it? <laughs> um, well, obviously, knowing um, I, I, I was a gymnast to be fair, when I before leaving Congo because I left Congo when I was nine years old, so um, obviously, I used to love doing flips. And you know, it's not like you know, it's not like in, in Europe where you have all the mats and everything that we was doing in sand. And what they used to do, they used to, um, you know, them truck wheels. They used to dig the ground and then stick it in, but in an angle, so you can only see the, the front bit. So you don't see, so it gives you time to run and bounce on it. You know, so I, I just want, I used to love doing gymnastics. And I always say this to people, but they laugh. I actually learned to do a backflip from a monkey. You know them little chipanji, you know them little monkey. <laughs> you know, we, I, we had one in at home, so it was like my best friend, you know, so... In, in obviously in, in in Congo, there's certain people that go to school from seven o'clock to about twelve ish, and then people goes in from one to whatever three four. So I used to go uh, I used to go morning, and all my friends was doing afternoon time. So in afternoons I didn't have no friends. So the only friends I had was my my <laughs> my chimpanzee, my little monkey friend. Yeah, you know, so. You know, and uh, one day I was just going, I was bored and I just went like just to, to chill with him. And then he was doing backflip. So I kind of looked at it and then I started copying it. So for some reason, you know how they, they're clever. So every time he saw me, he was doing that. So that's how I really started doing my backflip. But obviously, uh, when I came to England, I wanted to do gymnast, but my school teacher didn't allow me because he saw me play football one time, uh, Mr. Hat. I can never forget him. And he said to me that, you know what? You 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 make it as a footballer. So he did everything. He's the first person to buy me a football boot. But because when you start sign your contract, you can't do other sports but football. So the only way for me to keep up, you know, that's my love, my passion. So it was only when I score a goal, I can do that. But I remember doing it one time when I scored the goals and my friend Michael, my best friend, was like, "Yeah, look, yeah, Lomana, you gotta keep doing that. You keep doing that, you know." And it just stuck with me. So, yeah, that, and uh, I can never get injured from her, even though I did get injured with, uh, you know, <laughs> in Portsmouth, with uh, Mister Harry Redknapp saying that you can't do it. But it's something in me, you know. Once, once you score a goal, it's like it's like Big Al, you know. You can tell Big Al, "Don't do this," but. Once the score goes, the hands goes up without even knowing. So, so that was like my trademark. So, um, yeah, I loved it. I, I still do it now, you know. <laughs> Can you actually? I still do it now. Wow. That's Fantastic. what I do when in my, in my spare time. That's what I go and do. Like, I go and join those kids as I used to do when I was young and just go to those places. and do, But not as many as I used to do, but I still keep it up. That's my love. So, Lamana, you joined Newcastle from Colchester for just over £2 million. Were there other clubs sitting around at that point for you? And were Newcastle your I, first choice? I hope, I hope the two Nami's fans don't get mad at me, but I love Newcastle in my heart. Um, I also was, you know, I grew up in London, East London. You know, all my friends was Hammers, West Ham supporters. And um, I never really liked football that much. Um, because my dad was a footballer. So my dad, the thing is, why I never liked football, when I was young, my dad used to go football. Um, when they win a game, he would come back home and drunk, you know, after partying and then start, you know, I love my dad, obviously, rest in peace. That, that won't change. That didn't change nothing. By the time, he was like, uh, he would start fight with my mom, you know, but he was drunk. So I remember making a promise to my mom that I'll never drink alcohol. I don't touch alcohol. I've never been an alcoholic. And I said to my mom, I'll never, ever lift my hands on a woman. 
you know, that was the promise. So because of that, that was like football was like, um, it, that's the reason why I was causing my dad to drink alcohol, you know. Um, but obviously, you know, God's plan is always different. Even though I didn't like football, but God's plan was always for me to play football. So, yeah, um, when I was playing for coaches, I was actually on my way to New uh, to Tottenham. I was I, I had these things about Tottenham. I'm also I was like a Tottenham. I'm a Tottenham supporter, but obviously Newcastle is my heart because I played for the club. I fall in love with it afterwards. But Tottenham was a team that I wanted to because there the Ginola was there, Rue Fox. I, there was these players that flair players that I used to like playing, so I used to love. So I was actually going on my way to uh, to Tottenham. I was about to sign for Tottenham, but obviously Mick Wordsworth, obviously he was with Sir Bobby Robson. He's the one actually when he came to Colchester, he asked, he he spoke to me like a father. He told me because we was going through a hard time in in uh, in Colchester, we was going down, and then he said to me, "If you help me stay up in this team, uh, stay up in the league with Colchester, I'll bring you. I'll come and get you to whatever I'll be going." Because he knew he was going somewhere, but he didn't tell me where he was going. So he probably knew he was going to Newcastle. So um. Yeah, when he, he made me, he made a call to me. He goes, "Where are you going?" I said, "Well, actually, on our way to Newcastle uh, to Tottenham." He said, "No, you're not." He said, <laughs> "Then he's like, we was driving to Tottenham from Colchester to Tottenham, and it was like, it was like I was like asking myself, how come we never reach? I live in London. I know it doesn't take that long, <laughs> but it was like somehow we just managed to go up there. <laughs> we was going up north, so um, but I never regret. For me, you know, my my best player has always been. Ronaldo, a phenomenal Ronaldo. Knowing uh, Sir Bobby, rest in peace, that was like a father, a figure father to us. Um, knowing that it was him that was buying me, he trained my player that which was phenomenal. I didn't have no regrets. So, yeah, it was uh, Tottenham, then Newcastle, yeah. So uh, I never had no regrets. Oh, I love that. I mean, what was it like then, uh, a young man from the Congo playing for Colchester, all of a sudden walking into a dressing room with Sir Bobby Robson, Alan Shearer, Gary Speed, Shea Given, absolute mammoths of the game? Um, it, you know, the craziest thing is like, you know, you're watching. I, I'm not going to lie because all my friend Michael and, and uh, Mr. Hat um, and uh, uh, the scout, uh, what's his name, uh, Jeff Harrop, they feed, you know, there's so many times they feed into my head. It's like, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to go high. You're going to play high. So I knew one day I'll play because obviously you also have to be have belief in yourself. And I knew one day I'll, I'll be playing in the Premier League. But obviously I didn't know when how, when it's going to happen. And um, and I used to watch, like sit down and watch because I used to love play players. You know, I talk about real folks that played uh, in Tottenham, also played in Newcastle. You talk about G Ginola, also played in Newcastle. So I, I I used to watch all them games. You watch the Allen and and and, and wanted to say, uh, you know, asking yourself question, can one day be like them? Can I, you know, reach the level? And then suddenly, boom, I'm sitting down in a canteen. Shearer's there. Uh, <laughs> Warren Barton's there. Rob Lee's there. And you're thinking, I, I remember one time I was sitting down and I couldn't eat. So we sit in a canteen, I couldn't eat. So I was like, I think I was in a dreamland. I was like, oh, I was just keep staring at Al. I was staring at Big Al. And every time he looked my way, trying to get eyes to go, I, I'll turn around pretending I was eating, you know? So it took me a while. <laughs> it took me a while to actually, um, to believe that I'm actually sitting down with this legend. It's only until, I remember, it's only until the day Alan actually called me a magician, you know, in a training. Because I don't forget, I, I grew up in an era that I just used to love because I knew Newcastle. That was that's what got me to Newcastle is my skills and beating players. So the, the, in one time in training, I'll call me a magician, and that took that took that took me from here to there. You know, it's like oh my god, that's Al. I'll call me a magician. So it's enough. And and sometimes. As a youngsters, you know, even young players, they only need someone uh, that they look up to and to just give them that confidence, you know, that, uh, you know, just to say something that will, will take you to another level. Obviously, Sir Bobby uh, was the biggest person that can ever, for me, that stays in my, is part of my, 
it's my the biggest achievement for me. If someone asks me, I always say, "Hey, I play for Sir Bobby Robson. He, he bought me, you know, and he coached all these big players." So, you know, but it was amazing. It took me a while for me to believe, but and I was glad. Like Gary Speed, I know I was the club captain, but Gary Speed was our captain, players' captain. Gary Speed was everything. Uh, you know, I, I learned so much from him. The advice is the time, even though Al had time for us, but Gary Sid was just a, another another level. You talk about Savoy Robson, the Mane, and he called you when, when he signed you a very special talent. How did he improve you, and what did you learn the most out of Savoy Robson at your time at Newcastle? Nobody, nobody ever, nobody ever, like, I never actually told many people about this story. He gave me free videos. When I came, he gave me uh, Phenomenal. He gave me, uh, he told me to watch Maradona and he told me to watch Pele. So I never understood. Hold on. I, I, I'm coming from uh, playing park, uh, like park football. And then I got into coaches. So I didn't even last. I, didn't, I, I don't remember staying there for two years. And then suddenly I'm si sitting next to Sir Bobby, all these players. So it was like, okay, I used to play my football. Nobody told me any, because I've never been taught football. I never had enough time in a youth team, even though I learned football my, my, the hard way. The first player I actually went to see, because people was comparing me with my skills to him when I was in Iceland, and it was Joe Cole. So that was the first time I ever went to watch football. It was Joe Cole, because, you know, like I said, all my friends was hammers. You know, so it's like, I just, this is what, got me to Newcastle and then Sir Bob is giving me free videos and I was like, what does that mean? So I was watching these videos and thinking, yeah, oh wow, these people are amazing, like dribblers. And But at times I was going to him, I say, yeah, boss, but Gaffa, they're all, they're all talented, gifted. He says, yeah, but what do you see? So I was like, um, <laughs> at times I started getting upset. I was like, Gaffa, if he, if he didn't want me to be in Newcastle, just... Let me go back to Colchester. But he was trying to teach me something. So the more time I actually start focusing on these people had talents. They, are, they can almost do anything with the ball. But they never use, they never dribble all the time. It was times that they was doing it. There was times that, like, phenomenal, because I say he was my best player. So there was times like, hold on, you can beat every single player. But why you don't do it? So... I went back to him, I said, yeah, but they're talented, but they're boring. They don't do this all the time. He's like, no, that's what I want you to learn. When to pass and when to dribble. It's not all the time. I imagine like you're playing against a defender. Every time you dribble, then you'll know that oh, every time this guy gets the ball, he just wants to dribble. So he says he, wants, he wanted me to mix. And one time I was in, a, I remember I was in a, in a pitch. He called, uh, I don't remember if it's, I don't know which player that he called, a defender. He said, stay here. He said to me, give me the ball and run to the other side. So I passed the ball, I run. So it's like one, two, basically. He says, that's a skill. Uh-huh. He said, that's a skill. I said, I said no, Gaffa, I get the ball, I do this. <laughs> he said, no. <laughs> he, said, you can, he said, you can do that. I know you can beat one, two, three, but you can also. So he was like schooling me. Because obviously, I and you know, at the time, I didn't think of it. I was like, oh, this uh, gaffer didn't like me because he'll play me and then sub and he'll play. But he was like teaching me the game. It's only when I went to Portsmouth, I realized, oh, this is what he was doing. But because I was young, naive, I didn't clock it. I'd never been taught football. I just thought this guy was actually destroying me. Because I, when I remember the first season, I was doing everything dribbling. Then he told me, okay, start to watch Big Al and trying to learn what he does. So I, he taught me how to play with my back on goal, which was very difficult for me because I've never played with my back on goal all the time I used to face. So it was like, he was schooling me in a different, because there were so many players. I'm, I'm already in the first team. So he won't really have time just for one person. So he was teaching me in a way that I had to learn quick. But it's a shame I had to go to Portsmouth to actually realized that what he was teaching me and for so such a long time i wanted to know what he thought of me as a player even when i say this it, it makes me want it like it gives me shivers it makes it, it gets emotional because i for a long time i really wanted to know 
what he thought of me as a player. You know, um, it's only until not long ago, probably was six years ago, five years ago, I, I, I was just going into my videos and one of, um, <laughs> sorry, sorry, hold on. That's okay. Hold on. That's okay. One, Take your time. Take your time. One of, one of uh, uh, one Congolese uh, journalist, I didn't even know they was trying to do a, uh, a documentary about me. So they went to do interviews with uh, Bellamy, uh, Salano, and they actually had an interview with uh, Sir Bobby. And for me, it was like, what, oof, what he said about me, um, like just to hear, like, like I say to you that he was like, a, he's, it was like someone for me, he's always stayed to this time, even though I play with different managers, he's always going to be up there because with the likes of uh, Phenomena, so to hear what he said about my talents, I wish I would uh, hear that before. Maybe I would have never leave Newcastle the way I did. You know, that's one of the things I regret in football. I wish I wouldn't understand that he was trying to turn me into uh, a beast in a way. But young, naive, stupid, uh, you know, <laughs> but I don't regret it. So he, he really taught me a lot. I learned so much and, and maybe people look at me and the progression I made, if it wasn't because of what the videos and what he did to me, I, would, I probably would have never turned out to be who I was. Maybe if I was with him, I would have probably go higher, but I don't regret. The only thing I regret in football leaving Newcastle the way I did and celebrating when I scored against uh, against Newcastle when I was in Portsmouth. I should have never done that. I mean, yeah, that hurt. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> that, 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 that one hurt. It, 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 it does. For me, obviously, later on, I realised uh, but, but we're young. You, you, make, you make mistakes. And I, I just wish there was a different way that I'm sure some of the Newcastle people are listening now I was young, naive, stupid. As you know, it's a young generation. Like you didn't know, and especially when Rooney came out, you're thinking, okay, I want to play. You know, why are we not playing? But not knowing that this genius of a, a guy was preparing you for for a better thing. So, you know, um, I and I apologize. I'm sorry, to, but I'm. A, I love. I watch Newcastle now. I'm happy. You know what's happening now, and hopefully they got a a good young manager who I played with him in Newcastle, uh, in, top, in Portsmouth as well. And uh, hopefully, you know, with the Newcastle fans, it's all about heart. It's not, I know sometimes they're not, it's not about winning the league now, but it's about players giving all flair. You know, when we, was, when we was there, the fans, at least even certain games, we don't win, but once they see you give your 100% and, and that's what matters to them. You know, and obviously we got this. Hopefully we start bringing the names and bring the, the football that I was part of playing as well in that, you know, those generations. So, you know, and I apologise for did what I did, but I was young and I love Newcastle. I'm a, I'm a tsunami myself. So I, <laughs> it's, it's my dream. So my mum's there. I always come there all the time. My friend Olivia is still there, Bernard. So, yeah. yeah. I really apologize on that, but like I said, I was young and I. Yeah, I, I, you, I mean, so Bobby obviously had a love for you, Lamana, because there was some strikers that that came and went during your your time at the club, and he kept you around and played you in the Champions League. Just how special are those European nights playing for Newcastle back in the day, bro? I, I was in park football. And then I'm in the Champions League. You know, at times, you don't. I, I, I don't think we as youngsters and the Amiobi, and I, the Chopper, I don't think we understood what Champions League was. I, I really don't think we understood that. It's only until um, later on when I went to Olympiacos playing for champ, playing in champ, I realized, oh my God, it was big. It was it was huge and and. Newcastle, we was respect. We was playing. We was playing some of the best football. You know, we we. I don't know what happened. Maybe we was too young. Obviously, it was a mix of of uh, old players and young. And I, I don't. I, the, all the players knew the importance of it. I don't think us young players we knew. You know. And you look at it now. It was huge. And I look at some of the videos. I watched 
some of the games uh, we play against the Barcelona, even uh, the friends that we played against uh, Bayern. And I look and I was like, oh my God. And I, because I still speak to Robert, Laurent Robert. And sometimes we, we talk about it, even Bernard, we, speak, we talk about it, it was like, oh my God, we actually we was part of this uh, amazing and that like, we was entertainment. We're like entertainers. That's what Newcastle used to go back. I know sometimes we always cry, especially when we lose. It was hurting all of us, but Bobby, Bob, Sir Bobby actually created something special. I don't think, like, now we, now we actually look at it. This man was, this man was special. This man was, wow. Um, yeah, I, I, if I talk about this guy, there's so many good things. And it was like a father, not only to me, but you speak to, I mean, Yobi, you speak to JJ, you speak to Kieran, you, this guy was special, man. I, there's so much when we talk about him, like I said, I get very emotional and he he was very special. I mean, there was time the, the the discussion that we had, I, I was stupid. At one time I used to when he, I never used to play, I used to bust his I used to get out of the knife, I used to bust his tie. <laughs> I, I was young and stupid. When I don't play, I used to bust his tie. So there's so many stories that people didn't know. So I used to get so upset. I don't know what to do. Like, why why it, didn't, it doesn't play me. Why I hate it that people calling me super sub. I hate it that. So why he's not giving me? So I used to buy, and one time he caught me. He caught me like busting, and I was like with all emotion crying. I was like, yeah, every time you don't this, I do this all the time. And then he took me to his office. He sat me down, and he made me understand that. That's when I knew uh, this guy loved me, not just me, but all the. But I'm talking on my behalf. That's when I knew this guy. This guy loved me for, because he talked to me as a son, you know, uh, and he was special for me. But yeah, he was special. He was special. And uh, yeah, I had a great time. I really had, I had with the Kieran, because Kieran took us under his wings. With JJ, I think what he was trying to do, he was trying to do what Sir, Sir um, Ferguson did, Alex Ferguson did with Manu. He was trying to build youngsters like the Beckham, how they came out. So he was trying to do that with us and learning. But we were stupid. We didn't understand. So special man. He was special. Forever. You know, I look at those videos to nowadays, like forever be in my, in, in my heart anyway. So and Newcastle always have that special place in my heart. Lamana, can you remember your first Premier League goal for Newcastle? It was away at Derby County. Derby, the Derby. After being two 0 down. What can you remember Derby. that day? You know, you know. Sometimes I realize in life, I also um, tell my kids and and any youngsters that I, I go to. You know, sometimes never put too much pressure on yourself. You know, sometimes when you put too much pressure, it, it turns out the other way around for you. You know, for so long, you just wanted to score. I want to score. I want. I just want to score. So it started playing in my head. And then I think that's when, Sir, obviously, Sir Bobby Robson, like, came in, say, listen, it's not what I bought you for. You know, you have the other way, you know, your assist, you have other attributes to a game. So don't just put that into your mind because it... So the moment I start, okay, if I score, I score. If I don't score, but I'm just there to try and to fight for the team. And as long as we win, that's what matters. And suddenly, in Derby, boom, after so many, so many times you're trying to score many games. But it was a beautiful thing. It's not only that we won that game, that was also part of the game to get us into a, to Champions League if or, or to get us on, on the top. So for me, I didn't think of it. It was just, it was just a relief just to to score that goal um, but not the most important it was just for us to 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 get our three points and and uh, it, no it was a great feeling so it was something that like I said never put too much pressure on yourself it it will come slowly slowly and also another person that played big part was Gary Speed because Gary Speed at times was like as a flair players as a skillful players you get so much joy of going around like dribbling past a player but when you start your game, people don't realize this as a skillful player. When you start your game, when the whistle start, if you your first touch was bad or your pass was bad or you turn the dribble, it doesn't go through, your head goes down. 
it works your head because and that's when Gary speaks and goes, make sure you you build your game. When the game starts, make sure your first pass, your touch goes to the players and build from there. Ooh, we oh. just lost the moment though. Just waiting oh. until he comes back. He was in he was in full flow there, Sam, wasn't he? Oh. I know. I was. I, this has been so riveting, hasn't it? I mean, I, 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 listening to him speak, it's been absolutely phenomenal so far. I hope we can just get him back. Obviously, the four G is probably worse where he is in Africa than even worse than North Shields. So, whoa! No, we're not taking North Shields. <laughs> not taking North Shields down. <laughs> but some absolutely incredible stuff from the Marmot so far in regards to. His experience at Newcastle and very emotional in regards to Boy Robson as well, Sam. Very. And and who would have thought he held such regret for that? I, I mean, I didn't want to mention it too much, that Portsmouth goal, but we, we all think it, don't we? But, um, uh, yeah, it, it's... Um, I'm, I'm glad he um, kind of regrets it and especially celebrating because it, it did hurt, didn't it? And it could probably... That goal, obviously, I know it kept Portsmouth up uh, in the Premier League that season, but kind of knackered us for the Champions League, didn't it? <laughs> a little bit. a little. Well, it did. Let's be honest, it did. And if you can remember, actually, obviously, Lamana talks about Gary Speed. It's probably the only time that we've, when we've spoken to people, it's the only time that Gary Speed's really lost it in the changing room. It was after the game against Portsmouth. He really lost it. He couldn't understand why Newcastle didn't have that clause in the contract that he couldn't play against us. And Very odd. Very that well, very it forced game. the it forced the rule change, didn't it? It did, yeah, it really did, and it was. Um, but you can tell Sammy regrets it, which is, and again, sometimes, like Lamar has said, sometimes the young, everyone's young, does makes decisions in life which they regret probably later on. Um, and I'm sure if he had his time again, he do that. I think we've got Lamar coming back now. <laughs> So there we I'm go. Back. I'm back. I'm back. Hey, you're in full flow there, talking about Gary Speed. Guys, right, sorry, you know, I, in Africa, sometimes, you know, internet do go, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's the same in North Shields. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. Yeah, I'm back. Um, yeah, well, I, I don't even know where I was. So, I was, yeah, I was saying Gary Speed. Yeah. Gary yeah. Speed, um, yeah, taught, us, uh, taught me that, you know, and this is a knowledge, this is something I always pass on even when I'm coaching youngsters, I always pass it on, always build your game, always make sure when it starts that your first pass goes to your, your own teammates and it's the right one, and then build from it. Yeah, I mean, with this, the way that you played, Lamana, you were, you were always one that would get the fans off their feet, something exciting is about to happen. Um, we've got a player like that now in Alan St. Maximum. How much Maximum. do you enjoy watching him play? What a player! What a player! Um, <coughs> good player. You know, sometimes you know, sometimes you see yourself in someone. You know, you see yeah. some like he has um, he has that um, no fear factor that I don't care who you are. I'm I'm going past you. You know, um, I, I and I think someone that Newcastle should build a team around as well. You know, like I think that someone that the fans love. And uh, I, always, I always believe from what I, I've learned from different managers, you know, Sarah Bobby uh, and uh, Harry Redknapp, the team, you always need to have at least two maximum flair players that can make different, that can, that can uh, wake the crowd up, you know? Because I think people don't realise Newcastle, it wasn't just the players. We also, it was the fans. For me, personally, it was the fans that was giving me that extra energy. You like just hearing the fans. I remember even my first game, Charlton. I never played Premier League before, but the fans was amazing. It's as if the way they is like they wake you up. It's like that wake up call. So, you know, he's a great he's a great player. I think the the, the more players that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear yeah, you. We can hear you. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Hold can on, you. I can hear. I can hear you. Wait. Sorry, someone just called my phone. Sorry. Hold on. <laughs> Don't Where's worry, the mic? Don't worry. <laughs> can you hear us now, Lamana? Can you hear me? We can yeah. hear you. Yeah. I can't hear you. Wait. Hold on. <laughs> Why are they doing this? I told them I was doing interviews. All right. <laughs> can I just? 
come off and come back yeah, in? Come out and come back in. Come out and come back yeah. in. Shake your head if I can just cut out and in. <laughs> uh, okay, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> these are the things that you do not see on the Greenwood and Mulder show. This, I'm keeping the all this in. I'm keeping all this in. This is, this is gold. <laughs> gold. Love what it. a ringtone as well. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't expecting that ringtone. I don't know what ringtone I was expecting, to be honest. But yeah. Brilliant. It's brilliant so far. Like, to be honest with you, these, like I said, these are things that you don't see. But to be honest with you, you don't mind because... What you're hearing from the Marner song is absolutely, absolutely valid at gold, does, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Here he is now. He's back. <laughs> He's back again. Can you hear us? Hello. Can you Can hear, you hear us? us, Lamana? I am so sorry. I told my friends. <laughs> don't I, worry. <laughs> I told my friends that I'm doing an interview that they should call me, but for some reason I don't know why they keep calling me. I am so sorry. Don't worry about it. It's absolutely fine. Sam was asking yes, about yeah, Maxim Maxim. Yeah, very good player. Very, very good player. Skillful, entertainer. Um, yeah, I think someone that Newcastle should really keep and and build a uh, uh, build a team around and bring some bring some good players. Hopefully, I'm sure the manager will do that. Um, that. Um, I think the youngsters, you can't sell you. He's one of our best players. We can't sell our best players and get rid of them. So I think sometimes you need to build around there. And you also go, you got a goal scorer in, you know, with uh, Wilson. So yeah. there's it's good signs there, you know. And now hopefully we can get some players uh, in this, uh, in January that will help boost the team. So we don't want to go down. We really want, I think the, the targets now to stay up and hopefully next year and see how, what we can do and, you know, trying to to finish on that uh, on the first on that the other half, not just on the bottom half. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. But great player, good player, hundred percent. Lamar, you talk about your time at Portsmouth. You actually played alongside Eddie Howe. Did you think at an early stage that he would become a manager and even a manager of Newcastle United? <laughs> So I didn't hear that, sorry. No, it's okay. I was just gonna say you played with Eddie Eddie Howe at Porter for a little bit. Did you did you did you think that he would become a manager yes. in Newcastle? And, and with all uh, with his obviously with his bad injury that you had. Um I, I didn't um obviously we didn't play much, but he was there. He, he was always a quiet uh he was always a quiet person, uh which I'll say observed probably and very thinkful, you know, so I, there's nothing I can say, but he's he has shown himself, he proved himself with the likes of Bournemouth, that what he did in Bournemouth was amazing. And uh, I think sometimes you need to, I know certain people say, yeah, bring a big name uh, to Newcastle, bring back, sometimes bringing those managers, they're not used to, they don't know what Premier League is like. I know they're good managers, but they're not, they, they, are, they don't have no experience with the Premier League. He has, and he needs that time. And obviously, he took over from uh, from obviously Bruce. He needs time to to um because there's different different managers have his different philosophy of game, how they see the game. So he needs time and he needs to get his message across the player. You know, I I think is a I think he's a I think he's a very good manager. I think he will do good, giving him times and hopefully he can bring in his time. Like I say, for us now, uh, Newcastle is just to stay up in the league and then. Let's see what what can come after next season. So you can't really. So now for him, I'm sure he's just to trying to know the players, and I'm sure he's already thinking about other things. But at the same time, you know, to make sure the team stay up in this league, and then we'll see what he can do. But he's a good manager. Sometimes you need to give those youngsters, and he's not like an old generation. So he he knows he's, he knows the old football and he knows the new football so i think he'll be, i think he'll do great in uh, in newcastle let's give him time and i think he'll do great yeah finger, fingers crossed absolutely um yeah. with the new owners we've got now at, at newcastle we see um ex players starting to come back to st james's park to, to to watch the games and start to be involved with the club again are you going to make the trip to st james's park soon to uh, oh, come I, back I, and I, take I, a game in they don't ask me to come back, even to help uh, the youngsters youth team, even to pass. Because I'm also I, obviously I've been working with a new, uh, the national team, 
uh, attacking coach. But I didn't really, because I'm going through a tradi- uh, transition. I didn't know really what I wanted to do, but I love being on the pitch. I love passing on my knowledge. You know, um, I went to see, well, obviously he's no longer there now, Bellis, Bellamy. I went to see him in Brussels just to see his coaching because this one this one guy, I never thought he would be a coach because you know how Bellis was, but he turns out he was, a, he was a very good coach. I love what he was doing. You know, you see the, the likes of I and Kieran Dyer. I spoke to him a few times. You know, Rambo, we speak. So I love being around uh, on a pitch, passing on my knowledge because uh, there's nothing more that makes me happy to see a players, you know, um, someone that you give advice, go on to, to make it. So I would love to come back and and and, and be part because, like I said, I'm, I'm a Newcastle. I'm a Newcastle fan. Since I played there, it's part of my heart now. So if it, if it wasn't Newcastle, I probably wouldn't be where I am now because Newcastle gave me that opportunity. So... I would love to come back and watch my team to support my team. I would love to come back and somehow be involved with the youngsters. I can never say no to that. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm a Newcastle fan, man. Newcastle just got their first win of the season this weekend against Burnley, Lamona. Can you see Newcastle United staying at the three points off safety at the minute with some tough pictures Sorry? in December? Do you think Newcastle can stay up this year? I didn't hear what you. I know you said Newcastle won the first game, which I was dancing. Yes, that was. <laughs> Do you think you can we stay up? up? I think I think we we'll stay up. I think I, I really think we we'll stay up. Uh, it's gonna. It's hard. It's gonna be hard. But then, listen. When we was playing, you wanted to play against the best team. Premier League is the best, one of the best league in the world, and and those players all. all like, that's why I said. I think the message of the, the coach is coming across. He's learning the players. He's learning who can be a fighter. Because now it's all about fighting. I remember when I was in when I was in Portsmouth, a few, <laughs> nearly most every year, we used to play to stay up in the league anyway. So it was all about characters. It's about Harry. Harry, we had to find characters, people with this that you fight for. Because sometimes even, like you say, I was a, a flair player, give even the max. Sometimes skills ain't gonna work, but it's the other side. So you have to give everything. You have to fight for it's, a, it's about fighting now. And once I think that's what um, the manager is trying to get him across to him. And once they get that, it's for, I, 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 fingers across, I hope and I believe, I, I, I really believe that we will stay up because we have to stay up, man. We got all these people with money, we have to stay up. Come on, they need to buy some players for us to stay up. Yeah, oh, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. Because um, the future could really be exciting. Just um, a, a final one for me to you, Lamana. Um, what would you say was your favourite moment in a Newcastle United? Um, um, I, I obviously I loved every single thing, but. Not many people did, uh, knew this, but I did a lot of uh, uh, work for Newcastle outside, like visiting hospitals, people in hospitals. Um, it, there was one, I know it's not nice, it's sad, but Newcastle made me realise that how, how influenced and how, not powerful, but how footballers, how people look at you in a different way. There's a story, there was a young boy that was was dying, had uh, cancer, and they gave him, uh, I think he had three weeks to leave or something, but his, his family used to write letters, you know, and I never used to have time, no, not have time, but sometimes you sign your, your book and then you send it back to the people, so there were times that I wasn't really going through, because obviously when you're not playing, you're stressed, and so I wasn't looking at my post and things, but one time I did, and there was this boy, this family was sending me letters for a long time. And uh, this boy, I was uh, one, uh, he was a Newcastle fan, and I was one of his players, uh, favorite player. So, you know, I went to visit him, and I became so uh, uh, close to him, and I was going there all the time. And they gave him three weeks, but for, for some reason, it went on more than three weeks. And I didn't know what was happening. But obviously, my presence was actually whoever was giving him that strength to fight, 
Uh, I, you know, um, it was just amazing. Obviously, that's when I had to move to Portsmouth. And obviously, he passed away at the end. But it was, for me, it was just amazing how can us, a person, like, obviously, we do the same thing as everyone else does, but obviously, we're in a more public eyes. We're human beings also, you know? And sometimes we do things not realizing. That's when I realized we're all role models to someone. It doesn't mean just because I'm a footballer. Yes, he played a big part because we're all the time on TV and people see us, but we're all role models to a young one. My kids, none of my kids, only one, but I have five kids, but only one like football. The other one don't like football. So it shows you that they probably have someone else that they look up to. So I know I'm a father figure to him, but they probably have someone else. My dad, I love my dad. He was a hero for me, but I didn't really look up to him in a way that I wanted to be like a uh, phenomenal. So for me to, for these kids that they gave him three weeks and my presence made him stay longer, it was amazing thing. And and I, I think doing a lot of work outside, that like really, that was the biggest thing for me. Obviously wearing the black and white shirt cause it's, it's cause of that, that's what made me known. But it was more that doing work and meeting people and then see the love of the, the city and just being inside that St. James Park, those fans, Whew. It was a, it was a, it was for me, like I said, the only thing I regret leaving the way I did. I should have never lived that way. I should have never celebrated as I did. But it was too much frustration and anger. But uh, once again, I apologize to all the fans. But Newcastle will always been in my heart. And uh, I made a history in Newcastle playing at a young age from a boy from nowhere, uh, from Park Football, uh, Hackney Marshall to. Newcastle in a space of two, three years, and then Champions League sitting next to Al, sitting next to Gary Speed, Warren Barton, uh, Rob Lee, uh, Salano, who are still in touch with this now, Kieran Dye, all these people. Uh, I can only uh, I can only take my hat off and thank Newcastle for that. Really, yes, I really do, and I hope nothing but the best for you. I was going to say very, very finally, do you have a message to the supporters? Um, the, <laughs> you can never say something uh, like, oh, turn up to the stadium because they're always there. Regardless what, they always support the team. They always listen. Even at one time I came in and done a, a radio and uh, I remember it was a game against uh, Oxford. Oxford and yeah. Newcastle, the, is, the fans was there, amazing. And they never look at it, okay, we're playing uh, second division, third. So all I can always say, let's stick stick uh, together and uh, give this uh, manager, give this manager, Eddie, I'll give him a chance. And uh, new we, for a long time, we've been crying for a new chairman, someone to take over. Now they're there, let's give it a chance and let's just keep supporting, like always be a supporter to, to the end. And I'm sure good things are ahead of us. Fingers across, and I believe good things are ahead of us. So let's just, let's keep on supporting them. And uh, we'll, we'll be laughing again. So people will be talking about us again. Hopefully do what more, what Sir Bobby and, uh, you know, Kevin Keegan brought. Hopefully we can bring that flair and that entertainment again in, uh, in, in our stadium. Lamana, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the Green and Milner show today, talking all things Newcastle. We really, really do appreciate everything that you've done, and I'm sure all the Newcastle fans miss you and would love to see you back in Newcastle very, very soon. Very soon, very soon, very, very soon. Sam, where can everybody listen to this podcast? Link will be in the description for the audio podcast. New episodes released every Tuesday and go and check out the previous episodes, including the likes of Lamana's friends, Ollie Bernard, Nobby Solano. They've all been on there. Go and listen to them. They are equally as fantastic as Lamana has been today. Thank you so much, Lamana. Thank you. And let me just throw out something there. Solano wants to come back. Solano is a very good coach and he's ready to come back to help the youngsters. So make sure you guys get them to contact him. He's a very good coach. I've been following him. That's my bro. <laughs> Thank you. We will. We will. For myself, John Kupriam, Sam Milner, and of course, the famous Lamala Luwalawa. We'll see you all very soon. Thank you.